Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to go over some activities because these display, in my opinion, at least somewhat of state of bug bounties. Now I know that this is not super, super accurate because not everything gets disclosed. Um, I didn't take everything into account, but I did take a couple of factors into account. Um, and we'll get to them later, but first I want to go over the top five that I found, which is starting with this $50,000 bounty. Wow, I know, um, this is GitHub Access Token Exposure. So somehow GitHub exposed an access token and our friend here was able to find it and he was able to submit a report um, to Shopify in this case. So that's something that, of course, should never be leaking the GitHub access tokens, um, especially if your GitHub repositories are private. Um, very good find and definitely worth $50,000 in my opinion, especially if they're private and they shouldn't be discussed. Then we have a $35,000 one. This is also very good. Apache Zeppelin notebook at this address was made externally available due to coincidence of multiple misconfigurations. And this is what we often see is that sometimes misconfigurations, security misconfigurations, they start arguing with each other and they start becoming ambiguous. And then the system will start loosening up security because those rules, it doesn't know which one to apply. And sometimes things just go wrong. And that's also the case in this activity as we see here. And due to that, something was found which shouldn't have been found this is going to be pure broad scope it's going to be subdomain enumeration somehow i think um or subdomain brute forcing and he's going to investigate that manually or screenshot it and then he would have still seen that of course now we go on to a twenty five thousand dollar exposed kubernetes api this this one gave remote code execution and exposed credentials um, so text tree Rob found one of Snap's internal Kubernetes instances exposing an API endpoint without authorization to the public. So this Kubernetes, if you guys don't know, there's a thing called Docker, which is a container. It's really easy to start up those containers, but to orchestrate them, you need an orchestrator because you'll have many microservices running in different containers. And Kubernetes is going to be an orchestrator for that. And of course, it shouldn't expose its API endpoints without authorization, because then our friend Dextry Rob was able to just go and call that API endpoint and run arbitrary code and jobs as cluster admin. That's the highest possible right for that specific cluster. And with that, he also gained credentials with internal access to significant number of instances. That is something that is very, very bad. And I think the $25,000 is more than deserved. I think that maybe even something more could have come out of this, to be honest. That's a pretty bad vulnerability. We go over to this $30,000 PayPal uh, RCE via NPM misconfiguration, installing internal libraries from a public registry. That's pretty bad, of course, because the public registry can be manipulated by the attacker. And then the, uh, the repository, the NPM, if you guys don't know, there's a thing called Node. Node Package Manager is what NPM is. And it brings in packages, dependencies, external libraries. And it's going to bring them in from public registries in this case, which is pretty bad because then our attackers can, they can um, manipulate that public registry and they can put their own code in there, which would make the PayPal just bring it in and go ahead and execute it. Um, so this one is resolved. Thank God. Also $30,000. Mm, I think this might have been worth a little bit more. I don't know exactly what the impact would have been. It says RCE, but I don't know what the rights were that the process was running under. Like if you have a remote code execution and you're admin, you might be able to grab some system files or something like that. But if you're just a www data user or something like that, 
that's going to be pretty much restricted so depending on that it might have been more now the last one i want to go over is twenty thousand um, dollars arbitrary file read via the upload rewriter when moving an issue this one has been reported to gitlab so in gitlab if you move an issue around you can actually perform an arbitrary file read and I, I urge you guys to go through this report because it's very detailed and as you guys can see here the file name and path are not checked when copying an issue between projects so that means of course that you can access those um, files in a new project that you shouldn't be able to enter them but since they're not checked those paths um, you can do an arbitrary file read as you can see right here he's trying to grab etc password but I urge you to go through the whole um, through the whole report because it's very detailed and that's about it for the top five highest paying bug bounties on hacker one that I could find now there were more of fifty thousand dollars but they were less clear or the issues weren't as spectacular I picked out some random issues well not random issues issues that had some zinc to it something that I could bring to you and I also analyzed the complete bug bounty landscape well complete I say but I'm going to talk about 176 reports that we've analyzed and from that analysis we can see that majority of the bug bounty money is going to be in the lower grid and then you also have somewhat in the higher grid now I didn't individually go and check every single dollar I first of all I grouped it by um, elements of 1000 and then I went up at 10,000 with 10,000 each so um, there might have been some outliers that lay in the middle of this but I checked and it was usually like 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0. So there weren't many outliers. These were the major categories we could say. And of course 5k seems to be the majority here. And if we look at the other ones, 50k doesn't come out that often. Um, and what I also wanted to show you guys is that the severity of these bugs low isn't that prevalent now that to me that means that low hanging fruits aren't that prevalent at least not in these disclosed reports it's more like the medium issues that are prevalent and i've heard this before if you want to make a full-time living out of bug bounties it's the mediums that you want to go after and you want to report mediums at scale then you also have high and criticals now the criticals are a little bit more than high but i'd say they are on the same level about ish um and then you have bugs per supplier because from those 176 elements that i've tested 23 were from vanilla and that was a clear outlier to me because it's it's pretty high in my opinion you also have 16 for reddit 13 for gitlab 10 for epic games and 5 for slack and paypal and then the rest we have 104 elements left so that might be interesting to hunt on vanilla the, might be interesting you never know um so i hope you enjoyed this video that was it what i had to tell you guys today and i hope i will see you in another video because soon we're hitting 16,000 subscribers that, that's amazing i think we should party again i'll see you guys later bye bye amazing hackers bye